All right, so now I have these points. And um, if we go to open attribute table, there are still over 50,000 points in this data set. So the next thing I want to do, and this isn't the only kind of processing you can do, but it's a good demonstrator for some of the tools that are available, is instead of using every individual point out of 50,000, I want to start to, I want to create this other reference geometry, which will be an even grid over the whole city. I'm going to use that grid to um, average out some things, some data with these points. Instead of visualizing every single point where they all start to overlap, I'm going to actually use uh, an even grid to represent that data. Okay? And you might hear this referred to as binning, uh, the idea that you set up bins and then um, all the data sets go into a certain number of bins and then get averaged out. And it's just kind of standard um, techniques for visualization. We're not gonna, this isn't a, a, a spatial statistics class where you cover all that, but along the way I'll maybe um, show you guys different tools, different ways that you can work with this kind of large data. Okay? Um, so this kind of idea of grids and averaging is really useful and used a lot. So QGIS actually has tools built in to do this kind of stuff. Um, if you go to vector and research tools, you're going to see this random points, regular points, vector grid. These are the tools to actually create regular geometries to use for spatial processing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a grid over the whole city. And this is where project, uh, coordinate systems become important again. Because we want to set up this grid not just randomly, we want to specify a specific dimension for each grid cell. Uh, we want to do that in meters. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to switch to a projected coordinate system, and we're going to use a projected coordinate system for the rest of the demo. And this is typical when you're working with geography, you might use a geographic system when you're working with latitudes and longitudes. And when you start to do spatial processing, you're going to switch to a projected coordinate system. OK, so to make this grid, the first step is to uh, change to a projected coordinate system. In this case, I'm going to go to my project, project properties. <coughs> and I'm going to switch the whole map to World Mercator. Initially, because I'm just making a grid from scratch, I don't have to change my actual shape files. I'm just going to change the format or the system of the document. And when I make that grid, it's going to reference the document system. Okay? So I'm just going to change it here, World Mercator, and click OK. Remember, the World Mercator is like super distorted, right, at the extremes of the poles. But for China, it's more or less OK. All right, so here we are. So now we're in projected system. You can tell you're in projected system because you can go down to the coordinates readout here and make sure it's a large number. Okay, this will be meters again. And you can also check by measuring distance if you know a dimension in the city. Um, you can check here. You can use things like uh, I think there's a t measure tool. Yeah, a measure line. And you can see here it's going to be in meters and just make. Just make sure that makes sense. It's like 500 meters about this. Makes sense. OK, so once I'm in the projected system, I can create my grid. And the first thing I'm going to do is manually, in my uh, display window, zoom in to about the size, using the zoom tool, to about the size that I want my grid to be. This is pretty much covers all my data points. It doesn't matter if it's exactly the geography of Shenzhen. I just want to capture all of my points that I'm going to use the grid on. Okay? So I zoom in here. Now this defines my kind of view. I'm going to go to Vector Research Tools, Vector Grid. So a vector grid it will do the obvious. It will create a grid of either lines or polygons. In this case, we want polygons. It's going to create a grid of squares of a certain size over all of the geography they specify. And there's two ways to do this. You can specify an input layer, and it's going to create a grid covering all the input layer. In our case, we're going to use the window itself. So there's two buttons here, Update Extends from Layer, Update Extends from Canvas. We're going to go to Canvas. And it's going to get all of our extents of what we see here. OK, so once we set the extents, we need to specify the size of the grid squares. And you do that here. And this is why it's really important to use a um, 
projected coordinate system because in this case now we want to work with meters so here for the x dimensional specify 500 and by default it's locked uh, one to one x y because we want exact squares um, you see by default uh, uses some very small number that might make sense for a geographic system like some small fraction of a degree latitude longitude but we really want when we start to do spatial processing to use these meters because um, we want to be pretty precise how we make this grid okay so make sure it's output to polygons and then we, we output the shape file I'm going to create this as a shape file called grid you save this and click add result to canvas okay so if you click okay it's going to work through it uh, you can close this dialog box what you see now is it created this grid but it's not appearing in the canvas and this is because you know when we're doing this grid we set the projection to a projected coordinate system Mercator projection and we made the grid according to that projection um, but by default I have it set in my settings uh, there's a default coordinate reference system that's applied to all new shape files that are created and I have it set to use the WGS84 system so right now even though the grid was created correctly the system applied a WGS84 to that layer automatically so because we're working in Mercator um, if you have that set it won't appear in your canvas at the correct position right away and two ways to change that is you can change your default CRS for new layers somewhere in your options or you can just go ahead when you create a layer if it doesn't appear in the right space you can just specify the correct CRS by going to the properties of the layer just by double clicking on the name and in general you see here it assigned WGS84 so the coordinates for the grid are correct they're just referenced right now in the wrong coordinate system so to change that we just go to specify make sure to select world Mercator it's the one we were working in when we created the grid click OK and then apply and there's our grid and sure enough it's created to the extent of our zoom okay and then you can zoom in here and verify that this grid was actually created in the correct dimensions so you can get a distance here and it's 500 meters okay so everything worked out right